G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome back, of course, to the Time Bomb channel, but I hope all is good in your part of the world. Today, we've got a watch review of the Citizen Promaster Land, and this one is Ref, upside down, jv 107 e and then the limited edition here is, squeeze that one gently out of the box, is jv 108 63e and as you can see two very beastly watches so let me just refocus there give you the meat and i'm going to give it to you raw so i think um when citizen make big tooly watches they say they do so without reservation and uh, these fit that bill absolutely perfectly um some however i think will lament that the vital statistics on these are slightly more mrs world than miss world uh, but the upside of that of course is that these are designed um to be hard use watches and the brand has shown clearly over the years um that it can do that very very well indeed um these have been lent into the channel by first class watches here in the uk um do give them a shout if you're interested in these watches. They are lovely, lovely people. I went up to the store the other day to meet them in person. Uh, great guys, and they will certainly do their best to help on price matching. So these are two of the recent release in this range. It's the uh, 35th, if I haven't got that wrong, 35th anniversary release. Um, just a quick once over the one in my left hand. This is the limited edition and it is limited to 5,900 pieces. So they're quite happy to tell you that. Seiko always refused to tell you. Um, and this one is all set essentially to go for Rambo. You've got um, a camouflage dial um, on there. It also then comes with, excuse me, an additional camouflage strap. And then also the bezel uh, is camouflage. When I first saw the photos of this one, I thought that was, um, you know, I thought it was carbon or something. But no, it is actually war paint. And I'll try and give you a little bit, uh, a couple of extra close up shots of that one later. Um, the other then, of course, is just the is what I would call the standard uh, steel and uh, and black uh, blacked out bezel then there is one other in the series and that is this green dialer note that the green dialer then also comes on a cordura strap and i'm imagining that they're going to add a blue uh version a blue dial version later because these three colors seem to be their constant in the in their in their color preferences or their palette preferences um, other specific difference then is that the limited edition comes in at £699 UK and the standard then is £549. Um, so with the uh, limited, then of course, sorry, let me just pause there and zoom out again. Yes, yeah, so as I was saying, so with the limited edition, um, you get the special presentation box as opposed to the standard cardboard over here. Um, you get a nice little fold up card aspect there. Um, some other bits and pieces in here. There's your thing, and then you also get a limited edition stand. This is the strap uh, that you get, also that comes with the little tool in case you need one. And as I say, there's just a close up of that camo strap, which I'm guessing as well is some kind of Cordura type. Again, sort of a blue uh, night camo uh, there, blue black. Um, and then, as I say, this is your limited edition version. So that's how it differs uh, for the price point of the two. All right, so onto some key speckage um, because these are quite hefty pieces, as you can see in my hand. Uh, they come in at 44 mils across, but I think you might want to add a couple of extra for the, all the uh, crowns going on here. North to south um, on this rubber, they come in at 50 mils north to south, and then deep is 14 mils. Um, so, yes, it's quite a positive, uh, <laughs> positive lump. And then you've got very sensible 22 mil lugs here. Again, I love that Citizen never really bother with uh, 20 mil lugs on their big pieces because, again, that wider strap just enables uh, you to, to you know, cinch the, the watch better on wrist. Um, these come with 200 meters worth of watery goodness. And, of course, uh, then sapphire crystal up top. And let me just pause there and throw it on wrist. All right, so there's the watch on wrist. My wrist is seven and a quarter inch. Uh, just for reference, you can see that uh, down the pipe, sort of hugs that wrist uh, 
you know, I could probably go a little bit longer on there, but I think for many people that 50 is going to be uh, long enough. And then huge, beautiful buckle on the back there. I really like that. Nice and uh, nice and wide and pushed out. Little signature on there as well. As I say on wrist, I mean, I like big watches. Um, and I'm really happy with that. But I can see that many, as I say, will perhaps lament. You know, a 42 uh, mil version of this, I think, would have been a much easier wearer for more and more people. Um, so coming back to the uh, watch and some uh, specifics, um, you've got a little bit of hatching here on the uh, bezel at the, the 6 and 12. Um, it doesn't move, it doesn't do anything, so the only thing that I'm imagining that it's useful for is it gives you a little bit of a, a grippage here, perhaps when, the, when you're operating buttons and the watch may be wet, for example. Um, down at the 8 o'clock, um, then we have a, um, what, a compass, an inner compass bezel. And um, particularly, I think I've referenced this in the past, I often find these things a little bit uh, a little bit complicated because the, the screw in action of those, every time you screw them back in, uh, they seem to move. So Citizen have done away with that completely. And this is a free mover, um, which makes for very, very easy knocking out of place because that crown moves very simply. Um, you know, it's a light touch. Yes, they've got the half crown guard here to, to assist in that. But I'm wondering if it's the best option to 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 that issue. As I say, it's kind of a kind of a tough one, isn't it? You know, if it's a screw down, then it moves. Um, if you've got a half crown, it doesn't doesn't guard enough. So yeah, perhaps they just needed to have added uh, the additional crown guard here. Then I think you know it'll be much safer. Um, talking of crown guards and things, ah, citizen, I'm a little bit annoyed with this. The uh, those are fake uh, screws around the uh, chrono pushers. Yeah, entirely fake. Um, let me, yeah, you can see see there. They don't move. They don't do anything at all. And I just think that's a little bit little bit naughty of them. Um, the all the black uh, dial version here, then, as you can see, features. Um, let me just zoom in a fraction. You can see it better. Um, it's got a matte dial there to uh, assist in reducing reflection. But obviously, you've got um, a sufficient amount of um, AR under that sapphire anyway. Um, huge positive hands on these um, that make make this legible uh, from from you know from afar and also in many different lights as well also um, but with those hands being so thick um, they will cover up that digi display at the top there for quite a long period of time during the day and um, as these are shop owned watches I'm not going to mess around with the uh, with the settings so that if you know if there's an option, for example, like on the Casio where you press a button and it moves moves the hands out of the way temporarily, please do drop a comment down below, as I say, because I've been, I read very briefly through the module in specs. I couldn't see anything. I mean, the first thing that I found is here is just by pressing the crown, it inverts your, um, uh, your LCD, which is very, very nice, specifically for those people who are not overly keen on negative, um, negative uh, displays. The screen is the uh, MIPS, similar to this Casio variant, which means it's brilliantly clear and legible. Um, yeah, fantastic. There's zero distortion on it from different angles, etc. Super, super clear. As I say, I love the MIPS on the Casios and Citizen haven't disappointed here. Just for contrast, here's my old uh, Pingo. Um, excuse me, upside down. Um, old Pingo with the uh, LCD, just to give you a little bit of um, <laughs> contrast and compare. The LCD on the Pingo, I find quite legible. It's big enough um, at, at 12 o'clock there. I can see the time there perfectly. But uh, yeah, it, it loses out quite uh, uh, unsurprisingly to, to the MIPS over here. Uh, the movement in these is the recent uh, Calibre U8 22 and again my apologies as I haven't read up them on the module as as probably as I should have done and I'm not totally au fait with all the functions however as you can see on the dial then you've got your power reserve um, at the eight and the four o'clock uh, spinner then is your functions um, and then the functions of the the watch again are pretty much accessed through here and then you can start moving through um, settings etc all of your options in here so essentially you've got your digi functions You've got your chrono, you've got your alarm, per, per, uh, perpetual calendar, world times, etc., etc., etc. But that's it. Now, I'm kind of thinking it would have been nice um, for them to have 
added in some ABC functions, say for example, barometers, um, you know, other bits and pieces, but they haven't. Um, and I think again, when you're creating such an interesting solar uh, MIPS uh, related module, it was the perfect opportunity to, you know, to add in your altimeter, barometer. Yes, there's a compass here, um, but it's a slightly different compass and not everybody is gonna be that comfortable with using a compass. Uh, a bezel compass not everybody knows how to use a bezel compass um so again i think a lot for a lot of the uh shall i call them the younger generation they might have appreciated a compass on there as well uh, the rubber strap on this standard version is absolutely excellent um you know, i think it's a standard that they bought in from others um as i say really 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 impressed um just not neglecting the limited edition version over here comes on this bracelet as i say the bracelet is excellent the coating on there is brilliant but the one weakness that i found and that is this little clasp keeper here it's super flimsy and and light and looks like um it could you know that could pop off very very easily the rest of the clasp is okay as i say it's just that aspect there it's really really flimsy um yeah, just a, just a just a little bit of a, a weak spot here. Apologies for all the papers again, but as I say, this is going back to the shop, and I like to try and keep things as as neat and tidy as possible for them. Yeah, you can just see the camo on there as well. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Um, so as I mentioned, so you've got the camo strap with these, and then yeah, the lumage is citizen lumage. It's applied in delicious dollops, and it's going to keep you up at night. Uh, to check if it's still glowing. Note, note the mixed colour between the blue and the white. But oddly, they've neglected to loom uh, the seconds hand, so it disappears in the darkness there. I don't know, they maybe could have thrown a lollipop on there or something just to, I don't know, just to help it a little bit. Um, the other thing to notice, uh, the difference on here, so on the uh, limited edition, the, um, the crown is blacked out, whereas on the standard, um, the crown has that little stripe um, now, these are these are this crown uh, doesn't uh, doesn't you know doesn't do anything in that position. It's just a pusher. Um, so again, I'm not quite sure what the function of that is because it doesn't tell you that the crown is is screwed in or screwed out or anything like that. Um, no, yeah, it definitely doesn't screw in. So I think it's just there to add a little bit of colour um, for, for, for good looks. It reflects the yellow in the power reserve and then perhaps as well to differentiate it between the others. But again, if you know of another reason uh, for that crown having that stripe, do drop us a comment. Um, the case back on the standard uh, version is, the, is their traditional uh, smooth uh, back, whereas on the limited edition, then you get the engraved uh, 35th anniversary ProMaster uh, in, in design on the back there. Very nice. You can see there you've got your uh, bracelet release. Again, no uh, lug holes on that steel either. Of the two of them, I think I'm going to say I prefer the, um, the standard version, the silver and the black, simply because it has a slightly sportier vibe. Um, and in addition to which, I think as I'm getting older, I try to wear less and less camo. Um, that might not be the case for you guys, <laughs> they may appeal. But as I say, the um, the camo design there kind of reminds me a little bit of the camo design on the Garmin Instinct. Um, it's very, very, very well done and very pretty. Um, of course, I think it's completely futile because that isn't going to camouflage anything. Um, but it's an, uh, they've been doing this quite a lot on their uh, dive watches as well with the blue, uh, red camos and things like that. So it's an interesting touch. Um, clearly, it's popular. Otherwise, uh, Citizen would have stopped doing it. They're very responsive. Um, I think over, over, overall, though, these just are very, very, very good-looking Thule watches. I mean, it's what Citizen excel at. And I think as a consequence, these are going to sell very, very well and appeal to many people. Again, apologies for not having read up uh, more on the uh, on the module. I was just too excited to get these ones on the channel so you guys can have a look. Massive thanks again to First Class Watches for the loan. And again, do tell them that you've come from the Time Bomb channel. I'm sure that they will uh, help you out on pricing. Thank you to you guys as always for your time and for your view. And we'll catch you all in the next watch. Cheers now. <laughs>